Our ancient history is an ever-expanding and unfolding mystery that in recent times seems to have captured society's imagination. As we further explore and unravel new mysteries every year, one of the most intriguing questions is, why is North America so different from the rest of the world when it comes to ancient megalithic structures? This is where the Sage Wall comes into the picture. Is it the remnants of an ancient, eroded, and forgotten man-made structure? Or simply a naturally occurring geological formation, perhaps unique in its formation, but natural nonetheless? Once the question is asked, it begs an answer. But there is a bigger story to the Sage Wall than just the wall itself. The Sage Wall was discovered over a quarter of a century ago in 1996 by the property owners Chris and Linda. They had moved here in 1989 with the dream of establishing a sustainable education and retreat center, free from the accumulated clutter of standard American living. With plans to live in harmony with their newly acquired land as much as possible, they started the slow process of creating their space. With hard work and lots of sacrifice, Chris and Linda built a home, created a space for community, and as they walked their land looking back on all they had accomplished in the seven years since they had started, they discovered the wall. Buried with debris and covered with fallen trees, brush, dirt, and more, they knew they had found something special. The slow process of understanding how this wall was going to hugely impact their lives had just begun. Sage Wall sits within the Boulder Batholith region, a relatively small batholith in southwestern Montana. A batholith is a mass of plutonic rock larger than 100 square kilometers or 40 square miles in area, which forms from cooled magma deep in the Earth's crust. The batholith was named for the prominent rounded boulders that typify its landscape and the result of the weathering of fractured granite. This area is full of mineral deposits, including hundreds of millions of dollars of copper, silver, gold, zinc, lead, and other metals that have been and still are of great interest to this day. The massive boulders, which are so common to the area, are a wonder to behold. And this area has been walked over and marveled upon by man for thousands of years. Native Americans have long resided across these beautiful but harsh lands, with many a legend being passed down, including flood myths, giants, ancient cities, civilizations, and more. Even in modern times, we continue to find ancient evidence of prehistory in the region, with the Clovis Boy, 12,500 year old remains buried with hundreds of tools, found a mere 100 miles away from the Sage Wall. Could this entire land once have been home to a people capable of incredible things like we see all over the rest of the world, then scattered by some great cataclysm? So, is the sage wall natural or man-made? Let's look at the facts we have now. We've briefly covered the area sage wall exists in, which is full of all kinds of geological formations and activity. These naturally occurring processes can lead many to dismiss sage wall out of hand, and many have. As I've explored the site for the last two years, I've found many interesting things. And as I've shared footage of the site on YouTube and social media, it has seen a peak in interest among many with huge levels of engagement online and interest from major public figures. In the summer of 2023, at the prompting of the owners, scientists began doing preliminary research on the wall to include ground penetrating radar, grid mapping, ley lines, magnetic testing, stone lab analysis, exploration of the area, and 3D imaging. The hope is to, if possible, 
find a smoking gun, but also inspire even more research into the site if not. The rock is highly magnetic, with magnets sticking to the vertical surface of the wall and showing readings with levels that were seemingly shocking to the geophysicist who ran the test. If I rest them right on the rock, 56, 57. I've never seen granite that's that, that's that conductive. The ground penetrating radar has picked up something 15 feet below the surface of the wall, which for now is being referred to as a reflector. A large flat surface that could be one of three things. A water table, which seems highly unlikely at that depth, and no other indicators in the area. Bedrock, which could make sense, but would also seem unlikely for it to be so flat and consistent for the area if it was all natural and the wall was created through a series of processes such as dikes or fault lines. Or it could be a foundation just waiting to be discovered. The stone analysis we can show you here, but basically what this says is the rock is typical of the region composed of granite in line with the surrounding area. What is not typical is the highly magnetic properties of the stone specific to this wall. I have also found many outliers to the area from cup holes, seeming cuts in the stone, right angles, straight lines, what appear to be weathered carvings, and of course, what looks to be horizontally stacked blocks forming a wall, which, by the way, no other outcrops in the area have formed even remotely close to this. It's important to remember how much of the country is effectively off limits, unexplored, and on private land without the resources for uncovering things, except many times by pure happenstance. National parks and government lands occupy vast spaces with entire regions restricted from the average person. There is also and has been a vested interest in keeping our history in America very much a simple story of manifest destiny and civilizing lands. The editing and censoring of our past is a very real thing, and controlling the narrative is a vested interest for many within the scientific community. Those who should be the greatest supporters of new ideas and new discoveries within the scientific community are oftentimes the first to shout down, quite loudly I might add, those who have the audacity to simply ask the question, what if? This seems very unscientific to me, but what if we are watching this happen even now in real time? As the questions begin to be asked around Sage Wall, and it slowly, inexorably forced its way more and more into the public eye through its sheer awe-inducing mass and size alone, had it garnered the attention of those who would wish to keep it secret? Were we right smack dab in the middle of our own conspiracy? As public awareness grew, so too did a sudden interest in the mineral deposits of the area. Black helicopters began flying over the property and surrounding areas, hovering in place above Chris and Linda's home and the wall. Scientific equipment attached and jutting out like some kind of jousting lance from an armored steed. Notices were given to the surrounding homes in the area of the intention to survey. But what was of even greater interest as we dug deeper into these governmental operations is the company selected to perform the work. Rio Tinto, a British-Australian multinational company, is the world's second largest metals and mining company. With over 55 billion made in 2022 alone, and a history dating back to 1873, Rio Tinto has quite a past. But one section of its past of particular note is its destruction of ancient sites in Australia when making way for its mining operations. As of 2020, Rio Tinto had received rights from the government 
to 327 heritage sites already with plans to demolish 124 of them with 26 of the 124 already approved. Most likely all of these are gone now, but one of note is the Jukon Gorge, which showed evidence of continuous human habitation in two caves for over 46,000 years, including through the last ice age with stone tools, animal bones and middens, grindstones, sacred objects, and even plated human hair from several different people dating back about 4,000 years old being found there. What is also of interest is the timing. The Jukon Gore of Caves archaeological significance started to become known around 2009. In 2013, Rio Tinto received governmental consent to mine the site, which they started by using explosives on the caves, even while local indigenous groups made their protests known. We seem to be operating on a similar time frame now with the Sage Wall and Rio Tinto's interest in the area. What we do have going for us at the moment is Sage Wall resting on private property. But the clock very well may be ticking. What can be said about Sage Wall for sure at the moment is it is certainly worth further exploration and study. It can be a divisive topic with many people choosing to plant their flag firmly on one side or the other, man-made or natural formation. What is certain is that exploration and study of the site will only produce positive results either way, with more information about the area being gained. But what would the significance of discovering an ancient megalithic culture in North America mean for modern academia? Surely it would mean a complete rewriting of our history, and not just our history in North America, but the implications would be worldwide. Perhaps Sage Wall holds the key to the question, why is North America so different from the rest of the world when it comes to ancient megalithic structures?